Hey guys and welcome to your 12th Java tutorial and today we're going to be starting with um, my object oriented programming tutorials and first of all I'm going to teach you how to create an object based off of a class. Now here I have my calc class. Now you're like okay well last tutorial we used calc dot whatever to access the methods but there's an easy way to do this and you don't have to do it most of the time sometimes you do sometimes you don't it depends on the class um, but in this case it doesn't really matter if you do or not because I created it myself um, so you use the class identifier you name your object whatever you want I named it C then you have to use the new operator you always have to use new and then calc and I didn't put anything in my parentheses because I actually don't even have a constructor method yet and I'm gonna be telling you guys about that either in this tutorial or the next tutorial but um, that's how you create an object of a class an instance of a class is what it's also um, commonly called now down here I've done C dot addition and we're passing the parameters again that little football it's gonna go ahead and it's a void method gonna public void method and it's going to do console.write line. Now you've noticed probably um, that I didn't use the word static. And in C sharp, unlike say Java, because Java, if you make it a static method, you it can be accessed by either doing calc dot whatever or calc dot addition or C dot addition. But if you do static, you it gives me an error because it cannot be accessed with an instance reference qualify it with a type name instead so no static methods for objects in C sharp and then I just did um, C dot subtraction 55 five. so this is gonna print should print out 10 0 and it does 10 0 okay so now I'm gonna um, try and if uh, try and do calc dot addition five comma five and it gives me an error an object reference is required for the non-static field since it's not static I can't just simply use the calc um, the calc header the um, the class identifier if I want to use the class identifier I have to make it static and so right here, since I have calc dot addition and c dot addition, it's not ever. If you can't ever do that, you either have to create an object or you have to not create an object. You can't do both because there's no way in C sharp to use the class method and an object method and have it be called the same name and have it be able to be be capable of doing both. So that's the difference between. Um, static versus object methods and now I'm gonna create a constructor other than calc so let's just say um, let's make another calc so let's just do calc c2 equals new calc um, actually I don't really need to do that okay Now whenever you do a constructor, the only thing you put on it is public and you name it the same exact thing as your class, calc. And so this is going to instantiate is what it's constructing a object, but it's also technically called instantiation. Can you say that? Instantiation. <laughs> um, so let's say int x equals 5 and int y equals 5. So now since we have this new constructor here, whenever you create a new object, it's going to automatically call this constructor and it sets these integers equal to 5. And then I can go ahead and do like addition. So I don't and then I can take these out if I have it have the constructor call those methods addition um, x comma y and so then it'll send down 5 5 because x equals 5 and y equals 5 and it'll send down 5 here and 5 there and then I can do the same thing for a subtraction 
x comma y. And so it should print out the exact same thing that I had before, which is 10, 0. So that's an easy way to do that. But usually, just to let you know, you usually don't put a method call in a constructor. You usually just um, initialize your variables. So like, the way this would usually be set up, just to let you know again, you would usually initialize the variables out here. Because since if, if I put int x and int y in here, if I declared them in here, I would only be able to use them within this public calc because it's inside of this little constructor method here. But since these are outside of any method but inside of the class, I can use these variables in any of these methods here, which is really cool. So I can actually make these non-parameter methods if I want to and just um, do c.addition and then c.subtraction. And so since I took out those parameters, I don't need them. And I can even do just x plus y. That's not a y. Just x plus y and then x minus y. And it'll do the exact same thing that I've had it do the whole time. 10 and 0. So there's multiple ways that you can do this. And it's really more convenient to do it one way versus the other. But when you get into some really hardcore programming, yes, it's hardcore programming. This way is probably going to be more common, where you just define your variable outside and then you set it equal to that. And now I'm going to talk to you about overloading. Overloading is when you have like two things that are called the same name or use the same um, like um, signature is what it's called, but it actually does something different. So let's do a public calc and then put int x comma int y. Actually, let's not do that. Int num2 num1. And then down here, I can send in parameters 5 comma 5. So you're like, how does this work? OK, so if I create an ob object, actually, let me send in a different number, 7. 7. Okay. So I can create an object without putting 7, 7 here. So let me go ahead and do that now. Let me do calc c2 equals new calc with no parameters. So whenever I create this object, it's going to say, okay, so we're going to make an object of the calc class called c2, and it's going to be a new object. And then it's going to say, okay, so which constructor do we use? And it's going to look here and say, OK, so we're going to use the calc constructor method without any parameters. So then it'll come down here, OK, here's the calc method with no parameters. And it will automatically set these attributes to 5 and 5. Oh, I forgot to do something. Um, x equals num1, y equals num2. OK, so let's, OK. But then when I call this first one here, it's going to say, okay, we're going to make an object of the calc class called C. Stop doing that. Oh my gosh. Called C. It's going to be a new object. And we're going to do the calc constructor with two parameters. And then it'll come down here and say, okay, so here's the calc constructor with two parameters. Let's pass this 7 into num1 and this 7 into num2. So now it's going to say, okay, int x up here is equal to num1 and this int y is equal to num2. And so now, instead of using 5 and 5 as the default, it uses whatever I passed in, which is 7 and 7. So now it should do... c2. And so now it has 14 and 0, because it does 7 plus 7 and 7 minus 7 rather than just 10 and 0, and then it prints out 10 and 0 when I do it for C2, which has nothing in it, and I use the default. <laughs> Excuse me, that was a yawn. And um, so that's the basics of that. And usually, generally speaking, whenever you make 
a class and you're going to have it make objects based off of it. You usually want to name your data attributes like these. You want to make them private. And I'm actually going to talk about this in the next tutorial. Um, so that'll be um, talking about data attributes of a class for a method, the instance of a class. So um, I'll see you in the next tutorial, and I'm going to be using this exact same code for that tutorial, and I'll see you then.